So you made the mistake of setting up a Windows server and now you want to authenticate Linux clients against the Windows server's Active Directory services. We can do that. I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd on the Street and today we are setting up an Ubuntu client to authenticate against your Windows Active Directory server. All right, everyone, just a quick tutorial today on something I learned how to do recently. One of the biggest reasons that businesses like to use Windows is because Windows Server, using Active Directory, can provide a centralized place to authenticate all of your client computers around the business. That means you can make somebody one account on the server and they can log into any computer at the company using that same account. It just authenticates over the network. So if you've got that Active Directory server already set up, you've got your Active Directory domain services running, and you want to start switching over to Linux clients, Rather than making everybody individual accounts on every single Linux workstation, you might just want to have those workstations also authenticate over the network to your Windows server. It's a pretty simple concept, and today we're going to be doing that on Ubuntu 19.04. Now the reason I'm making this tutorial about 19.04 is because the Ubuntu Wiki has instructions for doing this on 18.04, but they no longer work on newer versions of Ubuntu. 19.04 is the latest version, and if major things ever change, I can make another video. But for right now, assuming that you want a standard Linux desktop and you want it up to date, you're going to be running the latest version of Ubuntu, which is 19.04. Before we start here, I want to mention, for a lot of my videos, people end up going to the comments section and typing out all of the commands that I'm I'm showing you in the video to make it easier for other people to just copy and paste when they're following along. For this video, I'm trying out something new. I have opened up the wiki section at nerdonthestreet.com once again, and I've created a page for this tutorial. I'm going to link that page down in the description below, so if you want to be able to just copy and paste all the commands that I'm showing you, there's a page on my website with all of the commands listed out in text format. Once again, the link for that will be in the description of this video. So make sure to open that up if you are following along. And without further ado, let's cut to the desktop and run through this procedure. All right, guys, and here we are on the desktop. Now, there are a couple of things that I did set up for this video. For one thing, we've got a Windows Server 2019 virtual machine right here. I'm going to go ahead and log into that. And you can see here that we are running an Active Directory Domain Services server on this Windows Server machine. Here we have another virtual machine. This is our Ubuntu client that we're going to be authenticating to the Windows Server once again over the network. You can see right now there is only one user on this computer. It's called Local Admin. If you've ever worked in desktop support, you know how this goes. You make one local user account to log in with in case this computer ever loses its network connectivity and needed to fix it. So we'll go ahead and log in with that here and get our Ubuntu desktop up and running. Now, aside from having a Windows server running domain services, the one other prerequisite to this video is that your Ubuntu client has to be able to reach your Windows server using its host name. Now, if you've got a Windows server that's running DNS services, then you can just come into your Ubuntu network settings and you can configure the DNS server to point to your Windows server right here. However, in my case, I'm not actually using this Windows server as a real DNS server, so we're just going to make a manual hosts entry on the Ubuntu box. You can see the Windows server's IP address is 0.6, so we're going to minimize this Windows server. We won't need it for a little bit. But here on our Ubuntu client, we are going to open up a terminal, and we are going to start by accessing our etc slash hosts file. Once again, just for this tutorial, because I'm not actually using that Windows server as a DNS server, I'm just adding the entry here manually, 192.168.0.6. That is going to point to winserver19, which is the host name of my Windows server. And we also want to add winserver19.nots.local. So for this example, if we bring our Windows server back up and we go to our local server here, you can see that our domain is called knots.local. So you'll need to replace these names with whatever your Windows server and domain names are in your business or your setup. But for now, we can exit out of our hosts file. And now if I ping winserver19, you can see we can reach it by name there, which is exactly what we need. So now we're going to start setting up Active Directory authentication. And once again, you can find the link down in the description of this video to the Nerd on the Street wiki page with all of these commands in it. We're going to start out by updating the package lists on our system. As you can see, all packages are up to date, so we don't have to do an upgrade or anything here. And we are going to move on to installing the necessary packages. Now the only packages you'll need on a fresh, full Ubuntu installation is sssd, heimdall-clients, and mskt-util. 
So we're going to install those three packages. They will pull in some dependencies. Now you're going to get this in Curses prompt. It's asking you what your default realm is. This Kerberos realm is another word for your Active Directory domain. Now we're going to put in our information here just for fun. We're actually going to scrap the Kerberos configuration file and make a new one in just a moment. But if you wanted to try and use the default Kerberos configuration file, you could put in not.local for our realm name and the server, of course, win server 19. The administrative server is also the same server. So we will run those and it's continuing to set up those packages. And that is all complete. I'm going to zoom into my terminal a little bit here so that you can see it better on video. And the next thing we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to move that default Kerberos configuration file to a backup location, just in case we need to revert to default later. But now we are going to make our own slash etc slash krb5.conf file. Here's what we're going to need in here. We need one section called lib defaults, and this is inside of square brackets. Our default realm, once again, is going to be in all uppercase nots.local, or whatever your domain name is. We're going to set reverse DNS to no in this case, DNS lookup underscore KDC equals true, and DNS lookup realm equals true. Now we're going to add one more section called realms, and this is where we're going to configure our nots.local realm. So after the name of our realm, we'll put an equal sign, and here we've got curly braces. And inside of here, we've got two entries. One is KDC. This is pointing towards our domain controller. So for that, we will type in winserver19.nots.local. And then we also need our Kerberos admin server, which is going to be the same one, winserver19.nots.local. We'll save that, and now we can initialize Kerberos by running k init space administrator. Now this administrator here, this just happens to be the name of an administrative user on my Active Directory domain. If I open up my Windows Server here and we come to our users and computers, you can see I've got the default Windows Server user administrator. And if we go to its properties, you can see it is a member of the domain admins group, which is what we need here. And just so you know, for later, in addition to this administrator user, we also have a regular domain user. This one is just called domain user. You can see its login name is literally domain user, and it is not a member of the admins group. It is just a standard user. We will use that for demonstrating login later. So we'll minimize Windows Server again and get back to Ubuntu. So once again, we're initializing Kerberos using a domain admin account, and it's going to ask you for the password to that account. So at this point, you'll type in whatever you would use to log into that on your Windows domain. And the fact that it worked and didn't give us an error message means that we are successfully connected to our Windows Server. So now we can do klist, and you can see we do have a Kerberos token issued. These next two commands are quite long, so once again, the link is in the description if you want to copy and paste them. But we're going to run mskt-util dash capital N dash lowercase c dash lowercase b. In single quotes, we're going to type in cn equals computers. That's our container that we're going to put this computer in on our Active Directory server and dash s. As you can see, the Ubuntu desktop's host name is Ubuntu-desktop. So in all caps here, we're going to type Ubuntu-desktop and then slash and then lowercase ubuntu-desktop.nots.local space dash k. We're going to save some information to a key tab file and we're going to name that my key tab dot key tab. You can name that file whatever you want. We're going to type in dash dash computer dash name ubuntu desktop dash dash upn ubuntu desktop with a dollar sign at the end of it and dash dash server win server 19 dot not stop local and finally dash dash user dash creds dash only that's the end of that long command you can see there was no computer account found on our windows server for ubuntu desktop so we created a new computer account which we'll be able to see in a moment first though we're going to run the exact same command one more time except we are going to take away the dot not stop local from the end of our name here. So we want to be able to reach this computer from other computers on our domain using either the short name Ubuntu desktop or the long name Ubuntu desktop.nots.local. So we're running this twice, but both of these commands are pointing to the same key tab file, so they will be sort of bundled together in the configuration. Finally, we don't need this cached Kerberos credential anymore, so we can type in k destroy to get rid of that. And now I can demonstrate if we open up our Windows Server and we once again go to 
Active Directory Users and Computers, which I X'd out of a moment ago. If we go to our Computers section here, you can see that Ubuntu Desktop has shown up. It would not have been there before, but now that we've run those two MSKT util commands, our Linux client is in our Windows Server's database of computers here. So next we're going to configure SSSD. So we're going to move the my key tab file that we created into the SSSD directory. Once again, you can call it whatever you want. We'll just move that right there. And now we're going to create our SSSD configuration file at slash etc slash SSSD slash SSSD.conf. And this will not exist by default, so we do have to make it from scratch. Once again, there's going to be quite a bit here. We're starting with the SSSD section. Our services are going to be NSS and PAM. Our config file version is going to be 2 domains equals not stop local. We've got an NSS section of our configuration file. And NSS, by the way, stands for name service switch. So it has to do with resolving names of Active Directory components. SSSD stands for System Security Services Daemon, in case you were wondering. But here under our NSS section, we'll put entry negative timeout equals zero. And under the NSS section, we're not going to enable it right now, but you can put a debug level here if you ever do need to log some information about what's going on with your name resolution with Active Directory. So we're just going to put in a commented line there just to remind us in case we ever need it. We've got a PAM section. PAM stands for Pluggable Authentication Modules. PAM actually sits a layer lower on your Linux system than your Etsy password file that you normally log in with. You can enable or disable the use of that slash etc slash password file using your PAM configuration. But in this case, we are going to remind ourselves once again that we can set a debug level there later if we need to. And the last section here will be the longest. This is our domain section for not stop local and we can put a debug level here, once again commented out. And here are the settings that we do need. We'll have enumerate equals false. ID provider is going to be Active Directory. Authentication provider, Active Directory. Change password provider, also Active Directory. Access provider, you get the idea here, it's Active Directory. Now dynamic DNS update, we're going to have set to false here. Our Active Directory host name, this is our client's host name. That will be ubuntu-desktop.notstop.local. Our Active Directory server, like I said, is winserver19.notstop.local. And our Active Directory domain is notstop.local. Our LDAP schema is going to be Active Directory. LDAP ID mapping is going to be set to true. Fallback home directory is going to be slash home slash percentage u. So this means if we don't have a home directory for a user that's logging in on our system, the fallback is going to be slash home slash the username, just like normal on Linux. Our default shell for users logging in with Active Directory is going to be slash bin slash bash. Our LDAP SASL mechanism is going to be GSS API. LDAP SASL auth ID is Ubuntu desktop dollar sign. SASL stands for Simple Authentication and Security Layer, and this GSS API stands for Generic Security Service Application Program Interface. This just has to do with how we're sending our authentication credentials to our Active Directory server. Two more lines to go here. Our Kerberos 5 key tab file is going to be the one we made earlier, so I made mine called etsy slash ssd slash mykeytab.keytab. And finally, our LDAP Kerberos 5 init creds equals true. So this is telling our system that our IT provider, which is Active Directory, is going to initialize our Kerberos credentials. With all of that in our file, we can save that. We are going to chmod that file since it is authentication related. We want to make sure it's secure to 0600. Hit enter there. And now if we do an ls-al on etsy sssd, permission denied if we do it with sudo, you can see sssd.conf is owned by root. Root has read and write access, but nobody else has any access to it. There's one last place we need to configure here, and that is PAM. Like I said earlier, that stands for Pluggable Authentication Modules. You can do some really interesting things with PAM, things like substituting a fingerprint scanner's inputs or a YubiKeys token for your normal Unix password. In our case, we need to tell our computer that it can look to Active Directory for sign-in. It doesn't just have to look 
to our normal password file. And just to show you, in case you're not familiar with that, I can cat out my slash etc slash password file. Most Linux computers have this file, and it lists all the different users on your system. You can see we've got root here, and the local account that I've got right here, local admin. So this file is what contains all of our usernames on the system. Now notice that neither administrator nor domain user are present in this file. I can grep for administrator and nothing is there. Similarly, I can grep in our password file for domain user and nothing is there for that either. So with that in mind, once again, we are going to nano into our PAM common session configuration. And we need to look for the line near the bottom here that is session required PAM Unix.so. Now I didn't just search for that line because if I try and search session required PAM Unix.so, you can see we don't find any results. We've got a tab here or a number of spaces. So just look in your file near the bottom for the PAM Unix line. This is the line that is telling your computer that it needs to check that password file when somebody tries to log in. And underneath that, we're going to add session required tab pam underscore make home dir dot so skeleton equals slash etc slash skel and umask equals 0077. So this line here is telling Pam that if somebody logs in and they don't have a home directory, we want to create them a home directory using our etc slash scale directory, which is the default directory on Linux that will contain your default home directory for new users. Right underneath that, you can see the Pam SSS.so module. That's the one that's actually going to check against our Active Directory server when somebody attempts to log in if their username is not found first in our local Unix Etsy password file. Obviously, the SSSD module is optional because we might start our computer up when we're disconnected from the network, and in that case, we can still fall back and use our local password file. But that PAM SSS line right there is what lets our computer know that it should attempt to authenticate through our Active Directory server, of course, via the SSSD service. So we will save that. We are going to systemctl restart SSSD. And after that, the next thing we're going to do is add our domain administrator account to the list of local administrators. The reason we're doing this is so that the person or people in charge of the Windows server can walk up to any of our Linux boxes and they will have sudo privileges automatically. They won't have to use the local administrator account. They can use the centralized domain administrator account and they will have root privileges. So we can do that by typing add user administrator sudo and we can run that. You can see it says adding user administrator to group sudo. And this is the point where once again, you can really see that this is working here because there's no line in our Etsy password file that contained administrator, yet we were still able to add that user to our sudo group. If we just tried to add some random non-existent user here to sudo, it's going to give us an error message. So here, add user actually checked against our Active Directory server, saw that this was a valid account on our Active Directory server, and it added it to our sudo group. Finally, we can test our login by typing su-l administrator, and here you'll have to type in the domain administrator's password. You can see we created a directory at slash home slash administrator, and now we are logged in as administrator at Ubuntu desktop. So that is pretty cool. We actually just logged in using a domain account. Now we can take it one step further by rebooting our computer here. And once we're done rebooting and we have our login screen, you can see by default, we've just got the one user still, local admin. However, we can click this not listed button and we can type in a username. So we're going to type in administrator. Once again, this user does not exist on our local system here, but it does exist in Active Directory. So we can type in our domain user's password and after pressing enter and a second goes by, we've got our Ubuntu desktop. And you can see this is the first time that our administrator user has logged in. So we're getting the GNOME setup wizard here and we can click through that. And now we are ready to use our system. Obviously it's a different user, so it didn't save my video resolution or any of my other settings, but we can log out of the administrator user here. And once again, just to demonstrate, now you can see once we've logged in the first time, administrator is showing up under our list of users here. 
We can log in using our standard user on Active Directory. We can click Not Listed. Like I showed you on the Windows Server before, the standard user's username is Domain User. And then the password for that one is a little bit longer. And we can type Enter. And you see Creating Directory slash Home slash Domain User. So it just created our home directory because it's the first time we've logged in on this machine. And now we've got, once again, our Ubuntu desktop. So that is all there is to it. This Ubuntu client is now authenticating against our Active Directory server. So personally, I don't use Windows Server in my home or my business, but I know that there are a lot of people out there, a lot of small businesses might have a simple Active Directory domain server set up in their office. So if you're wanting to use the same user accounts on your Linux clients, you can totally do that. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this process. I might make other videos on how to do this on other distros if there's enough interest in it. But for now, it's a fairly straightforward process. Once again, if you want to read through all of the config files and everything that I typed in, you can do that using the link down in the description to the Nerd on the Street Wiki. And as always, if this video was helpful to you, consider joining the Nerd Club at nerdclub.nots.co for just $3 a month. It's a huge help in allowing me to make more Linux tutorial videos like this one. But for now, that's about everything I had to show you. So I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd on the Street, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.